Happy weekend guys. I wanted to do one more quick video before the week gets underway. It's only Saturday so two more days and the EU League gets started and APAC kicks off on Tuesday as well so lots of siege coming up. As I said in my video the other day, um, Oregon is a map we're going to be seeing an awful lot of I think. It's looking like it's pretty popular. It's a very interesting map with a lot of choices that you can do on the map. Quite a few sites are viable. In fact all four sites are looking viable at the minute and all teams are experimenting what you can do across all four what i wanted to do today was go over the basement because the other day i went through a quick video going over a uh, top floor attack which i found really interesting to both showcase what defenders were doing and also how attackers are trying to approach it i haven't put as much uh stock in this particular round of how basement is played but i think it's just worth going over a round in general one that was as of now me not being quite sure of the outcome i can't quite remember exactly how it played out but wanted to go through it anyway First things first, I want to go a little bit over the sort of thing that we are seeing as to how teams are attacking this generally. If you've played it in ranks, you probably attack it in a very similar way. Um, we haven't seen too many teams use two of the other ways, which I will go through in a second, but some teams are starting to utilize them, as we saw in the game that I'll go through in just a second. It isn't that particular round where they made use of these alternative attacks, but at least gives you an idea of what you're going to see. So this is basement, big towers up towards the north up here. And you have your construction entrance coming in down here that leads across and into this nice little area of the map over here called Bunker or Blue or Tarps, as some team call this area, or L down here because it's a reverse L, quite naturally. That's the normal attack that we see coming out of teams. It's to first try and take control of Blue, so they're coming through here. And they'll also send some upstairs into Big Tower at the same time. The reason for this being that you can apply pressure from down here that doesn't mean, it doesn't allow defenders to play in inside of pillar area so comfortably. Otherwise, they can do things, and a lot of teams do do this. They'll stick a shield either here or stick it here and just either watch straight towards the door or watch towards the door from here and a little bit towards the stairs as well. But on the sheer basis that someone sits on the stairway, because it's like a little thing that sticks out here, like the actual banister in a sense that you can crouch behind. You just constantly have pressure as attackers looking down this way, being able to um, put aggression onto anyone who's trying to play... Let's get rid of this. Anyone who's trying to play around this square, or if this wall is left soft, which it normally is, anyone that's trying to play inside of electric as well. So you need to have both angles if you're going to try and push through this single doorway. I mentioned the other day that on Oregon there are a lot of single doorways that kind of bottleneck attackers and make it quite comfortable for the defenders, but there are also ways in which attackers can break those apart. What we've seen a few teams do, and Quadzi, who we spoke about a little bit the other day from Godsent, something that we've seen him do quite a couple of times is stick a shield on this corner. He plays here, and what you do is leave this wall um, reinforced, you leave the second one here soft. So that's left soft, you stay here and fight, you throw some C4s out to here, so one pushes through, you try and contest the angle. You might stick a Goyo shield in this doorway, for example, and once you feel you're under pressure or your shield is destroyed by a Zofia or something, you might choose to stack some ADSs here as well. You back away through here and you reinforce this wall up. So this now wall is now all of a sudden completely solid, but it's like doing a very close, short range extended hold. Quite a lot of teams have been made making use of that. Some haven't and it's come back to bite them. So I would expect to see some creative play around this at another point. There's also a drone hole that goes through here, which as far as I'm aware, you can lie down inside a utility here and you can spray through this hole at a Thermite or a Maverick trying to get this wall open. It's not commonly done. I don't think I've seen too many teams do it, but I've heard it's something that you can do. Anyway, idea being you get control of this side as attackers first. You force out the guy who's playing down here. He goes back into sight. Cool. You push someone up towards the doorway here. Cool. You try and apply some pressure around this corner looking in. You might, if you're a Habana or a Maverick, also look to open up electric wall here. Because the big thing about downstairs, and this is my favorite thing I think about basement, is there are just so many vertical lines that you can open up. If you get inside a freezer, you can open up a line that looks the entire way across into utility. If you get someone here with an open wall through electric, you can cut off this whole area of the map as well. If you get someone down here and open up some maverick holes, as we've seen a lot of teams do, you can open up one all the way through towards freezer door as well. So immediately you are just dividing and chopping up this bottom floor, which makes it really hard for the defenders to use much vertical movement. They might place someone inside of corner here. They can't really move down because of the sight line that's threatened there. They can't really push up in towards boiler too easily because someone might be holding the stairs angle around this sort of area down here. Or someone, as we pointed out a second ago, might be coming across from electric as well or holding that angle. So it is easy to get control, especially in this room here. Once you have it, there's no way of you being flanked. There's no hatches above. No one can come behind you because construction is obviously a huge outside area. It's a very, very comfortable spot to be playing in. Um, that is mainly the sort of focus that we see. You take control of tower, take control of, of um, tarps and bunker, whatever you want to call it. Get control of boiler. The most common plant then comes in trying to get through electrics, planting this little corner in here. 
because you are safe, I believe, here from door. They can't see you as you're planting exactly. Someone has to kind of contest you around the bomb, which is here. You have to actually push around and go for a contest onto you there, which as long as you've got cover coming in from electric, can be really tough to do, well, anything at all. I don't think I've seen too many other plants come through. So that's been the main focus I've seen so far inside of supply. The alternative attacks that we see in, because that is the main one that you won't see too much variance on. You'll get defenders playing down here. You might get one playing down here at the end. One maybe holding up in boiler to begin with. One inside freezer. So on and so forth. Um, what you sometimes see from attacks is a lot more rare. I think I've seen a freezer attack once and a laundry attack once. Is quite simply, get inside a freezer. You'll probably have done this one in ranked. And look to open up this wall here and do some damage inside a laundry. And try and get it planted in this bottom corner here. With someone holding this rotate, holding up through the main hallway, through corridor, whatever you so choose. That still will require some pressure to be put up here on stairs. So you can cut out the angle coming through here and stop people rotating up through supply and out to contest down this way. It's all about cutting off these long angles like I keep on saying downstairs. Mainly the vertical ones, sorry the horizontal ones. But the vertical angle from these stairs also is quite key. The only other time I've seen a different attack take place is one that looks to utilise the laundry area down here. And particularly main stairs. I think the issue many, many face is that you would rather use this for flanks later round. If someone's trying to go for a push into electric and you want to cause some trouble, you might crouch your way down these stairs and try and cause some chaos. We do see this in one of the rounds. I don't know if it's this round that I put up on the stream behind uh, paint, but there is one round where teams do make use of this with a Havana and cause quite a bit of trouble later on for the defending team. So there are options. The most viable seems to be right now the top side take, freezer then second, and pushing in through laundry the third take. At least that's what we've observed so far. It might turn out to be completely different next week. What we'll do is we'll jump through this round that I've got up on screen here. Between this time it was Granite versus Ambush the other day. Teams currently fighting for second and third place in the Nordic Championship. So relatively good by their own rights. And both teams that obviously chose they wanted to play Oregon on this day. So we'll see how things played out. Granite brought in Madman as their replacement for Stead who they dropped last week. Um, on the other side for Ambush they've been together as they have been for quite a while now. So you would probably anticipate there is more togetherness for them they've been playing together a little bit longer as this current solid five with a couple of changes coming through for granite i was a little bit skeptical about how well they would do and as you can see at the top of the screen already two rounds in favor of ambush who i believe won the first attacking round and then went on to lose the next two bringing us up at two and two on the downstairs skip over this a little bit you don't need to see upstairs you need to see downstairs thank you cool there we go so this is what I mentioned, right? Shield here. It's probably the number one thing to mention. It's either here or it plays on here instead. In this case, they're going to set up here and look to contest if someone tries to push through. Uh, barbing towards sight. Nothing too special. Same on stairs. If someone can't just rush down and like hard peek him. Nice and fast. So they are standing up to try and hold this boiler in for as long as possible. Right now, no one has bothered reinforcing here, I don't think. In fact, no, both walls are reinforced. Quality's awful. Forgive me. <laughs> Oscar doing Oscar things and looking to roam. Eastwood is trying to protect the hash, hatch, I imagine. Badger's doing what Reaper spoke about in his video looking at Oregon last week, is you will start off on the stairs at the top here, where you would know they're going to take at some point. The whole idea being that if someone's going to send drones down before trying to push one in through here to try and contest you in tier one, then you can kill drones as they're trying to see if it's safe to push in. It's a free couple of drones. You rotate back towards down to onto site. Nice and easy and comfortable for you from there. Outside of Jinx style, everyone on Ambush is kind of gathering up towards construction. You see this push coming in from these three on the right now. JT's, that's cheeky. So he's actually just rushed door and found a kill because no one was watching the angle. So, oops, Capital's gone. They got three hard breach as well. So this is them opening up this angle I spoke about earlier on, right? They had now this angle all the way across. This is going to mean JTC has to stay here and is relatively pressured unless he can get some kind of assistance. But again, you can't flank through construction to help. You can't go through these walls because they've actually mute jammed it off as I've just spotted. He is stuck here unless he gets some form of assistance, which is not always going to be so forthcoming. But let's have a look. I wonder if he backs away now that he knows it's being opened. No, he doesn't. They've also still got Badger on stairs and they haven't bothered taking stairs yet. This is the one thing a lot of teams do is take control of this and this is where I'm a little bit worried for them. But maybe they just ignore them and cut the angle off and just try and push site directly. Time will tell. Yeah. 
no play. This is the thing with two roamers, right? I think they were hoping someone was going to try and push meeting hatch and no one's bothered. Him dying here is painful because now they haven't got someone to play for trades up inside boiler. And that's just all on Jinx Dow, literally crouch walking his way through. How on earth has he got past Eastwood? Hatch. I think that's what it was. And Eastwood just didn't anticipate it, in which case, how did he not hear it? How is Oscar? Oscar's through Hatch, right? Also. Yeah, Oscar's above. So Oscar found a free kill from above. Inside a meeting through the Hatch. So all things considered, both teams made a pretty critical mistake early on here. And even lost a hard breach. Uh, yes, they've got two more left, but you already have one exothermic down. It's still not super ideal. Madman's holding laundry side, but I think they know at this point the pressure one was coming from Freezer because that's where uh, JTC died from. They know there are two or three currently playing out inside a bunker because they've seen the two hard breaches there and the third one that didn't manage and they killed one earlier on, sorry. So it's not awful right now for Granite. Eastwood finds one. He was on the upstairs previously. Where was that one? Downstairs in Freezer. So he's come around behind as we saw a second ago into Freezer and killed the Havana. So now what they've got to worry about is these guys left inside of Blue Tarp's area. I'm feeling pretty optimistic on them right now. I think Badger's still holding upstairs. He is. So the fact they've got no one trying to apply pressure on tower just means they are so limited here. I mentioned in that earlier setup that you need to have control of both if you're going to contest Boiler. But they're left now in a situation where Boiler isn't strictly safe to go into. Don't do it anyway. By the way, a lot of the teams this week were playing Carly an awful lot. I don't know if that's just a one-off thing for Nordic or if we're going to see it happening quite a lot inside of the EU League as well. Time will tell. Zeus finds one, gets traded out by Badger because they didn't even drone that he was here up on the stairs. And the round's pretty much done from here, right? It's three versus one. Easy. That was relatively short and that was on a defensive win. I think more based around the attackers not really taking the right kind of positions, right? So let's jump back. See if we can find another downstairs attack. So I think this is really worth going over as much as we can. Here we go. Here's one. Did they change. No, they're committing. Okay. So the same as we saw before. Same setup for the attackers. A couple of changes on the defender side. No, nope. Cable Mice back. It's all exactly the same as it was. Oscar's playing on the roam. I'm not sure about that shield here. Like, I get it. If you accept expecting them to open this wall, you just set up a shield here and feel happy. But then who's playing in Boiler? Eastwood's holding upstairs again. Oscar's also upstairs again, so two on the roam. We had this actually when we were looking at that video the other day of Godsent playing defense. They had two downstairs in kitchen looking to play vertically while defending upstairs. And they just lost too many members upstairs too quick. I think Quadzi and Meads died very fast. You're in a one versus four, one versus five upstairs. You aren't winning that one. Roaming smoke. We always spoke about the benefit, and Crazy told us this when he first moved to them. He gives them that edge of saying, I'm going to go and crouch walk around that corner and kill someone. I didn't quite expect it to also correlate over to defense, but here we are. So he's the solo holder down south here, and Jinx Dowler's has got him behind on drones. So already we're seeing this difference in setup, right? Up north, it looks like JTC is there with the shield, unless his shield's here still. Honestly, JTC, don't care about this. Yeah, he has got a shield, so shield's there. It's fine. So they've got a shield here and a shield here. Or did he move that one? No, it's still there. Okay, so they've got two shields. See the setup earlier on. My bad, my bad. Where's the third? Badger's on stairs again. So Ambush don't like taking stairs. Right, so now you see the difference in terms of what they're trying to open. They're trying to go for this instead. Jinx down knows that their focus is entirely on this wall. Knows it's a great reason to be able to push up here and find himself a free kill. Him being down here gives him so much control on what we were drawing earlier on, right? Like, him being in this position, down here, he's just killed the guy who was holding on the other side of this wall. He's now got a wonderfully long angle up here, which also cuts through into watching anyone who pushes out of freezer if someone tries to rotate downstairs. So his team can open this wall, plant inside here if they so choose, or maybe down in the bottom corner, or even in this back corner where it's a bit safer potentially, or even just rotate straight down into laundry and plant it inside here with him, as long as he doesn't die. Now, I'm pretty sure in this round he does die, so I've kind of spoiled it for you there. Sorry, but let's take a look. Hippo's in, pushing into laundry. Replant now, got down back stairs. So, a rotation has come in. This is why they've got the two roamers upstairs, and I guess Eastwood and Oscar. So Eastwood, in this case, is two kills are found in the back. Okay, I need to see where they came from. JTC and Badger. 
this. Oh, baby. Pushes through smoke, dude. Glad you found a kill down through the hatch there. Not the hatch, but the line through here. Holdsworth boat. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Work both ways, guys. Go figure. And then they find a second by pushing through smoke. That should not happen. A bit of a panic there for the attackers, I think. They just lost their composure. Eastwood tries to push down to find a kill as the plant comes in from Hippo. Just watch it over again. Fast round though, right? 60 seconds in and already all this is happening. Plant here. Eastwood comes down. Holds the angle. Gets killed. So Jinx Dial has done a lot for them here and they can stick this plant out. Same up Corridor again. We spoke about if Jinx Dial doesn't die, he gets so much done. But it's King, I think, got that second kill from the longer angle. Yes, he does. I could have swore Jinx Dial dies on the flank here, but maybe not. Rip Badger, I guess. Big round for Jinx, right? Brilliant round. Just on it earlier on. All about the flanks running through. This spot here. Straight up. Also being able to cover the king as he plants in this corner here. Unfortunately, they lost one here. And I think the other one was about here. Bam and then bam. Um, but even with that, they just couldn't stop Jinx Dale doing what he does best. Maybe thinking of a different round. But that's cool. All right, I tell you what, let's do something different. I'll go and do a third round, because why not? You can stop watching the video if you want now, if you've got a good idea of what's going on, but I think it's worth watching this final round. Here's a good one. This is a big clutch, I think, actually, in the end of this. Pretty sure it went to round 12, if I remember rightly. Nope, this is the last round, and there's me. Oh, yeah, this is great, look. <laughs> they green screened us out and just left us sitting in the studios if we were actually there. Obviously, we're not actually there. The best one was the end of the break when we were trying to like false high five each other. I'm getting sidetracked. So let's go back to the game. <laughs> Okie dokie. So they've left it soft this time. We were really curious about the shape of that hole as well. Like it's it's man sized. Like <laughs> why you step through it. This is what I was talking about the strategy earlier on. This is a good round to look at actually. Then let's do this. Perfect. Kind of already spoiled it. The granite win it, but I think it's worth looking at anyway. So. Leaving this wall soft. We mentioned this earlier on. Leave it soft. Play someone in here. This is what we saw Quadzi doing previously from Godsend earlier on. And it's looking to play contest as long as you can. You stick another Goyo shield up here. Look to contest there for as long as you can. You force utility out of the defenders or out of the attacker, sorry. Otherwise, the defenders can just blow these as soon as you try and push. So it makes it hard. Setup-wise, Zeus on the Kaide. Otherwise, things look the same to what Granite had earlier on in their defenses. Attacking, they have the Nomad to stop the rotations, but only hard to, two hard breaches, sorry. Plus a Zophir to help them with dealing with the shields, I expect. And I think there is a split that comes through from Granite here. They don't push three or four down construction the same way Ambush did. They're even leaving Electric soft. So this wall here. Onto the right. It's mute jams, they can't get a... In fact, that makes sense now you think about it. It's that size so that they can't try and skirt a uh, drone wide of the hole, but they also can't have someone that can just pop around and shoot that jammer, uh, jammer out, so fair enough. One gun. No one's even playing on this. Oh, no. If it peaks and dies. Lucky, I guess. It's kind of weird that no one's playing here. Like, you do all this setup and then don't bother. Here in Profit Shoes, you probably want to reinforce this because now this is left soft. You've just made their job so much easier, right? Lots a couple of drones and drones are trying to take it. Fair enough. It's free. It's free real estate. They've had two try and hold this angle. They have one hold electric, one Zeus holding back here in freezer. And JTC is like, thank you very much. Good night. Imagine that drone came through from Madman before it died and got him a free kill. JTC, pfft, slow the man down. That's not bad, but you're not going to win that shotgun at that range, sadly. I'm still not content with this round, really. It's been too scrappy. Hmm. Was there another laundry round? Upstairs. Upstairs is really cool. I'm really liking upstairs sides at the minute. Here's a downstairs one. <clears throat> 236. Interesting upstairs holds. 
So we're at the point no one's died. Let's just go through this. Go back a little bit to see what the setup was. Hippo playing here again. Actually maybe playing it this time. Profit playing on stairs to do the drone catching we mentioned earlier on. A couple holding freezer, one holding laundry. Fine. They're not too worried about the hatch because it's electrified. That's just banned. Unconventional push from granite looking towards freezer. So here's a freezer take example. And they had the Maverick on this hatch as well, but he hasn't bothered finishing it yet. Hmm. I think they're waiting for the all clear, all the clear that it's cool. It's okay to push down here, maybe from Madman. I'm not sure, or he's just trying to apply some pressure while they do this. Eastwood's already been shot out a little bit as well by Zeus, I think. I think Sal also took damage. So they know there's a firefight going on inside a freezer right now. They just don't have confirmation that that's where everyone is coming from. Another glow shield step down here too. This is nice. This angle as well. I remember seeing this and thinking, oh, this is nice. Good one for rank to get on the box. Hold this corner. Cozy. Howie isn't dead. 1 HP, by the way. So it's taken them a good minute and a half, but they have managed to get control of Freezer. Oscar's waiting up on stairs. Sorry, not stairs. In garage, two push downstairs. Profit's doing profit things upstairs. If he gets a flank, it could be massive down here. This is the biggest weakness, right? If you're not going to Nomad or Claymores or something, someone can come behind you through this doorway. The doorway being quite tight does lend itself well to playing around Claymores, though, right? Oh, playing hatch. Oh. The patient game. I remember this at the moment. We were like, why are you killing him, dude? But look at this. Patient of a, patience of a saint or a prophet, you might say. Bam. Bam. Ouch. And that's just an ambush collapse completely. And there's no comms here. I remember calling this out at the time. No comms there to say, he's in freezer. What are you doing? And at the time we concluded, maybe it came down to him just being afraid of... The other angle being pushed, and had to choose which one he wanted to watch and chose the wrong one. So that's a freeze to take attempt. An attempt was made. It wasn't successful because Prophet got the flank off. It's not necessarily the cleanest round to demonstrate exactly how it should be played. It's not a perfect scenario, right? It's still a new map. Lots of teams are still learning things. It's not super ideal. Um, but I hope that's given some insight into how this site plays out a little bit. Just to kind of reiterate, you have a lot of pushes that come in down this side and also taking control of this, even though we saw neither of these teams do it. It's what we've seen for the last two weeks and also inside of LATAM. It's very common to have a player play behind a shield here or here. It's very common to try and get an angle through electric or through this doorway to contest or an angle through here to contest all the way through to freezer as we saw JTC finding that triple kill from. Sometimes you will see a freezer take. It's less lot common than seeing this one up top, but to try and spice things up, teams may opt to do that. Depends entirely on what info they find. Defenders will sometimes play a shield here and leave this wall soft and slink their way back through, reinforce it, and therefore you manage to waste a good chunk of time and utility from the defenders. Um, very critical to make sure that as defenders you are keeping this pressured. Sometimes you'll see this wall left entirely soft, just so people can shoot through it if they want to, or at least contest down into here while someone's trying to go for a plant. This is the most common plant spot I've seen for when you're trying to plant inside a supply. Otherwise, you may as well try and make use of laundry like we saw King go for. I think it was King. Um, roaming isn't really a thing that much on this site. I don't think we've seen one or two. We saw Profit make, make a big play, but honestly, I put that down to laziness on the, on the other side of Granite rather than it being a highly successful tactic because there is no soft flooring downstairs. It's all based around this hatch, this hatch, and this hatch, and the stairways, of course, that you can see. So there is a lot to cover, I think, as attackers when you're pushing. Um, but realistically, I think a team that has rehearsed a few times over will be able to do those things. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please do tweet me at Desertu or drop a few comments on the video. I'll happily answer those uh, ahead of next week kicking off. But until then, see you next time.